I want to move on to the military. Senator Rubio, all restrictions on women in combat have been lifted as long as they qualify, positions including special operations forces like Navy SEALs. Just this week, the military leaders of the Army and Marine Corps said that they believe young women, just as young men are required to do, should sign up for selective service in case the draft is reinstated. Many of you have young daughters. Senator Rubio, should young women be required to sign up for selective service in case of a national emergency? Well, first let me say there are already women today serving in roles that are like combat, that in fact whose lives are in very serious danger. And so I'm, I have no problem whatsoever with people of either gender serving in combat, so long as the minimum requirements necessary to do the job are not compromised. But I support that. And obviously, if now, now that that is the case, I do believe that selective service should be opened up for both men and women in case a draft is ever instituted. I think the more fundamental challenge we're now facing is what's happening to the U.S. military. I've said this many times already, and I think it's important to start paying attention to this. Our Air Force is about to be the smallest it's been in 100 years. I'm sorry, in our history. Our Army is set to be smaller than it's been since the Second World War, and our Navy is about to be the smallest than it's been in 100 years. I think we need to begin to refocus on rebuilding our military, because every time we have cut our military in the history of this country, we have had to come back later and rebuild it, and it costs more, and it's a lot more chaotic and dangerous. When I'm President, we are rebuilding the U.S. military. Thank you, Senator Rubio. Governor Bush, do you believe that young women... Say it again. Do you believe young women should sign up for selective service, be required I, I to do, do so? I do, I do. And I think that we should not impose any kind of uh, political agenda on the military. There should be, if women can, can um, re meet the requirements, the minimum requirements for combat service, they ought to have the right to do it, for sure. Uh, it ought to be focused on the morale as well. We ought to make sure that we have readiness uh, much higher than we do today. We need to eliminate the sequester, which is devastating our military. We can't be focusing on the political side of this. We need to realize that our military force is how we project our word in the world. When we are weak militarily, it doesn't matter what we say. We can talk about red lines and ISIS being the JV team and reset buttons and all this. If we don't have a strong military, then no one fears us and they take actions that are against our national interests. Tell me what you'd say to American people out there who are sitting at home, who have daughters, yeah. who might worry about those answers and might why, worry why, why that the worry draft is reinstituted. Well, the draft's not going to be reinstituted, but why, if, if, if women are, are but accessing... But you just do away with it? No, I didn't say that. You, you, you asked the question not about the draft, you asked about registering. And if women are going you to be supporting... the draft. If, but if we don't have a draft. I'm not suggesting we have a draft. What I'm suggesting is that we ought to have readiness being the first priority of our military, and secondly, that we make sure that the morale is high. And right now, neither one of those are acceptable because we've been gutting the military budget. We also need to reform our procurement process. We need to make sure that there are more men and women in uniform than people, than civilians in our defense department. There's a lot of things that we need to do to reform to bring our defense uh, capabilities into the 21st century, and I'm the guy that could do that. That's why I have the support of generals, of admirals, of 12 uh, Medal of Honor recipients, and many other people that know that I would be a steady commander-in-chief and rebuild our military. Martha. Thank you very much. Can I, can I be really... I'll be really clear on this because I am the father of two daughters. Uh, one of them's here tonight. Um, what my wife and I have taught our daughters right from the beginning, that their sense of self-worth, their sense of value, their sense of what they want to do with their life comes not from the outside but comes from within. And if a young woman in this country wants to go and fight to defend her country, she'd be permitted to do so. And part of that also needs to be a part of a greater effort in this country. And so there's no reason why one young woman should be discriminated against from registering for the selective service. The fact is, we need to be a party and a people that makes sure that our women in this country understand anything they can dream, anything that they want to aspire to, they can do. That's the way we raise our daughters, and that's what we should aspire to as president for all the women in our country. Thank you very much, Governor Christie. Can I say We've something? We've just covered, uh, wait one second, Dr. Something Carson. Something about the draft, just very quickly. Very quickly. Um, you know, 14% decrease in the number of people applying for voluntary military service, and I think part of it is because of the way that we treat our veterans. You know, we wouldn't be a free country if it wasn't for them. And we have 22 veterans per day committing suicide. So I think what we should do is have an external support system for people once they volunteer. 
and it should follow them throughout their career. Uh, they should follow them for three years or five years afterwards. A year before they get out, it should be working on integrating them back into society so that uh, they quit on Friday and they start their new job. They should have health empowerment accounts that are subsidized so they can go to any medical facility and be taken care of. They can go to a VA if they want to. But if we start taking care of our veterans the right way, we won't have to ever worry about a draft again. Thank you very much for bringing up that subject, Dr. Carson, of our veterans. And for another question about our veterans, we go back to Josh McKelvin from WMUR. Josh. Thank you, Martha. None of you on stage tonight have ever worn a uniform as a member of the armed service. That's the reality of it, but uh, as a commander in chief, you'll also be charged with the care of 23 million active duty service <coughs> members and veterans in this country. Some have suggested privatizing the VA as a way to enhance care and increase the quality of the care uh, and access. Others say that uh, veterans should carry ID cards that would allow them access to any hospital or health care provider. Governor Bush, what specifically would you do to ensure that those who have sacrificed for us are cared for? I totally agree that we need to give veterans more choices. A veteran's card to be able to go to a private provider will enhance the quality of the service inside the Department of Veterans Affairs. We need career civil service reform. Only three people were fired after waiting lists were dropped where veterans didn't get care and people died. It is outrageous. And Hillary Clinton says that that's acceptable because she is captive of the public service unions. Career civil service reform would allow the next president to fire people that are, sheer, that are just showing sheer incompetence. At a town hall meeting today, someone came, told the story of their father, who looked like he was 85. He, had, he got a bill eight years later from an operation he had, eight years it took. They couldn't resolve the dispute. And then he was told that he died. Literally, the Veterans Administration sent a death certificate to this guy, and uh, it took nine months to clarify the guy. I met him, and he's voting for me, and he is <laughs> likely to be alive. This is, this is outrageous. It is completely outrageous. So giving veterans more choices, creating centers of excellence, focusing on the true problems that exist. Dr. Carson is completely right. We need to start focusing on this earlier before they become veterans so that there's a customized plan so people don't fall through the cracks. We can do this, but it's gonna require someone who has proven leadership skills to make it happen. Josh, Governor, Governor Kasich, do you have a favorite approach? Josh, I mean, clearly, when a veteran comes home, they should get health care anywhere they wanna go. In our state, which is what we should do in the country, you know, if they drive a truck from Kabul to Kandahar in Afghanistan, we say, you can dr drive a truck from Columbus to Cleveland, and we don't have to go get a license. We're going to hand you one. And if you've got expertise in the military, we're going to give you college credit or community uh, college credit for the things that you did for our country. And in addition to that, I'll tell you one of the biggest things I think has to be done, and I would do it as president, the Pentagon has got to work with the returning soldier, sailor, along with the family, and we have, they're the most valuable employees in the country. I call them golden employees. Everybody wants to hire a veteran, but there is a disconnect between the job openings and the veteran when the veteran comes back. The veteran is a leader, the veteran is strong, the veteran is drug free. There should be no unemployment among veterans, and if the Pentagon will work with the veteran services agencies all across this country, Josh, we can get people jobs, and we can get them jobs quickly, get them their health care, get them their college education. Let's lift them. They're the greatest people defending the United States of America, and we need to take care of them, and we will. We uh, will. <laughs> Senator Rubio, okay. yeah. Well, my brother's a veteran. We're very proud of him in our family. He served as a Green Beret in the 7th Special Forces from 1968 through 1971. And as part of his training, he jumped out of an airplane and he lost his two front teeth. And for years, he's had to go to get these dental claims. And every time he goes to get one of these dental claims filled, the VA asks him, well, how do we know you lost your teeth in the Army? And he says, well, it's the only time I ever jumped out of a plane. But he's had to fight through this process and I've watched it firsthand. That's why I'm proud that I worked in a bipartisan way. We passed the VA accountability bill that for the first time allows us to fire, allows the VA secretary to fire someone who's not doing a good job, who's a senior executive. And the governor's right, they've only fired the three people up to now. More people will be fired if I'm president. But the portability part of it is incredibly important. 
Veterans should be able to take their VA benefits to any hospital or any doctor they want to go to. When I am President of the United States, veterans will be able to take their benefits to any hospital or any doctor that they choose. Senator Rubio.